Well, as much money as I made in network marketing, I still run into old friends of mine who just can't believe that I retired 13 years ago. They can't believe it. I got friends of mine I hang out with right now. Brian, man, I remember we we celebrated your retirement party, man. Did I tell other people? Man, this boy retired 13 years ago, but it's like a joke. <laughs> like it's part of a little game they play. Every time me and my friends get together is how Brian retired. He's so silly. <laughs> I'm serious. And you guys have to understand, I just laugh because I'm 13 years, I'm conditioned now that my story is funny. And it is. You guys have to understand this. All of us are crazy. You are. You are crazy because you're in the top 3% who understand that the status quo isn't working. You are crazy because here it is on a weekend and you sticking around for some personal growth and self-development. You're supposed to be watching the game. Don't you know you're crazy? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be watching millionaires play football. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be watching millionaires play football. Mm -hmm. See, they got theirs. <laughs> you got to get yours. And what kills me about people, isn't it funny how everything that we look up to or everybody that we aspire to be, you know, whether it's go to a Michael Jackson concert, go through, go to a, um, a, a athletic event, or go to a play produced by Tyler Perry or whatever, everything that we look up to creates money for that person. Yes. So while Janet Jackson dancing, she getting paid. Right. Okay, she went from Europe to Brazil to the United States to Chicago to Miami. They toured for six months, but they trust me, it ain't all fun. They're working. Mm -hmm. You just enjoy what they do for a living. So when people say, "Man, I ain't going to one of them trainers the game on," oh, so you watching some guys working? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what people don't miss. It's just that you find joy in what they do for a living. See, I just made my mind up for a couple of years. I was going to stop making other people rich. See, I work my butt off now. Now, if I want to go to see Floyd Mayweather fight, I'm at the fight. He can punch somebody, snot go across my head. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I'm at the fight. See, I, I went ahead, but see, I didn't see no fights for about four years. Mm -hmm. But now, I'm front row if I want to go. You see what I mean? I missed a whole lot of Falcon games. But see, now, I'm a season ticket holder. I missed a whole lot of Braves games. But see, now, if I want to get a sweep, I can get a sweep now. See what I'm saying? You got to go ahead and pay the price. You cannot get out of paying the price. Everything has a price tag attached to it. Even what you're doing now, you're paying the price. Whatever you're doing for a living, you are paying the price. You can't get over that. So when I hang around friends in my environments now, it has become comical to me that we can't even really have the same conversations anymore. Because everybody always says that. See, everybody want to be a fortune teller. If it doesn't work, I told you it wasn't going to work, Brian. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what they're saying now? Now this has been working and been working for 13 years? Why well, I knew you was always special. When you was little, you had a little gray streak. <laughs> you know, I, I knew you were something different. You always have been a little different. See, nobody ever says, you know what, Brian? You work like a Hebrew slave. We didn't see you for six years. You was on the go. You sacrificed for your child. We didn't um, hang out with you at any of the barbecues. You missed all of our college functions. You didn't pledge when you was in college. You didn't have time to party. I just made some decisions. Mm -hmm. See, that's what you got to understand. Being successful is a decision. It really is. You got to decide, you know what? Today, I'm going to make some changes. And nobody ever tells you that. See, here's the reality, guys. For at least 10 or 15 years, you sat and ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner with your financial advisor, your family. So y'all ate and shared ideas, but all they could give you is what they gave you. And ain't nothing wrong with that, because all they can tell you is what they know. I had to change the dinner table so that no more beans <laughs> would struggle. That was a conscious decision for me. I really made a decision with this conversation right here, and I don't tell a lot of people this. When I graduated from college, I sat down with my counselor who gives you an exit strategy, right? No, no. When I graduated, 
I was I was interning in the bank for four years. So what happened to me? Tell you what the aha moment, because you all have them. I sat down with the young lady that hired me. This is exactly what she said. She said, Brian, when do you want to start working? I said, look, you don't understand. Now, I just graduated in June. I said, I need to start working in July. Sally Mae has called me 10 times. I just got off stage. So you get your degree, you got on your hat, you threw it up, you get your diploma, next thing you know, Sally Mae right here. Yes. How you feel? Yes. I said, I need to start working today. I got student loans. I'm trying to help my family. My mother's going through some stuff. My father's going through some stuff. She said, Brian, you don't want to start working. I said, yes, I do. She said, no, you don't. She said, you don't understand. You need to take three or four months off. Because once you start working, that's it. I said, what do you mean that's it? She said, Brian, think about it. You're about to enter the real world. See, that college stuff, all that, being a student, that's over. You're about to get into the workforce, and never again will you have an opportunity to just take four months what? Oh, she wanted me to start working in, let's say, October, November, to enjoy my four months off. Right then, I said, so you're basically telling me I'm about to sign up for something called life that has, in your mind, no other options. That's when I made a decision. I said, you know what? I see now why for the past two years, my mentors, it had to hit me though. I see now why y'all been telling me to build residual income. Because in essence, what she was saying was, you'll never get this much time off again. Once you start working, the more money you make, your expenses also what? Go up. Go up. Now you're going to get married. Now you're going to have children. There is no longer an off period. So I said, well, if that's the path I'm about to sign up for, what am I doing sitting here talking to you? She broke me from the cycle right then. I made a constant decision. I said, you know what? For the next two years, it's going to be about me, my finances, and my family. Period. That's something you got to do. But you know what that takes? Nobody wants to hear this. Changing your bad habits. Yeah. 